May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I know that there are a lot of Bible characters that were asked to do some pretty tough stuff, but Hosea? God told his prophet to go and marry a prostitute. To love her, to woo her, to cherish her as his precious bride. Also that the people of Israel could see what their unfaithfulness to God looked like. And Hosea did it. And as everyone saw coming, she was unfaithful to him. She cheated on him again and again, even sold herself out to her lover. So God came to Hosea and told him to love her to buy her back, to woo her, to cherish her as his precious bride again. Really? Could you have done that? And then there were the Corinthians. In what we know of as 1 Corinthians, Paul had written to that that church in Corinth telling them to excommunicate that guy who was sleeping with his father's wife. I mean, that's awful, right? So so good for you, God. Get rid of him. There, there shouldn't be people like that in, in, in the church, right? And so and so the Corinthians excommunicated him. But did you see what happened in this second letter to the Corinthians that we have? Paul said, okay guys, now forgive him. Bring him back. Make him a part of your close-knit church family. Welcome him in with open arms because he has repented. He is now one of you. Don't even think about it. Don't even act like any of that ever happened. (laughs) Whoa, 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 But, but God, don't you remember what he did? God, do you really want people like that here? Yep. So now comes the gospel. And if you guys have been paying attention, the past times you've been here, you notice that as the church year works, the readings all tie together, so it shouldn't be a surprise. We have a very similar theme in our gospel today as Jesus gives us our hard truth for today. The hard saying of Jesus, the hard thing to do, he says, love the lost. Love, that serving, sacrificing, putting them first, the lost, the ones that aren't acting like believers, the ones that don't deserve it, the ones that cause so many problems. Love them, cherish them. Love the lost. Do you? Recently, I've been having a lot of communication with a couple that we've been helping with some, some food and, and uh, water and toiletries from, from our pantry here and, and uh, from our benevolence fund, even buying some gas for their generator because their water and power uh, have been cut off a long time ago because they weren't paying that. In fact, I don't think they're paying for where they're living. They're kind of squatting there and the place is, is falling apart. But we've been helping them because, well, they're hungry. They have needs. And recently here, we were talking and and, and she expressed her thanks for all that we as a church have been doing for them and and said that she knows they they need to get back into a relationship with God. And so I said, you should come. Come, we'll grow in God's word together. And and she said, well, no, you, you don't want me there. And I said, yes, I do. She said, well, well, your church doesn't want me there. And I said, yes, we do. She said, well, I, I smell too bad. I haven't been able to shower or wash clothes for so long. No one would want me there. Would you? It's easy to say, yes, of course we would, right? But would you want to pick them up? Even if they've got a criminal record. A long one. Sometimes it gets messy, right? 
Sometimes it's just way easier not to deal with that and to just to focus on, on the ones that don't cause so much trouble as if there is such a thing. Think about your own life. Is there the family member that you don't talk to just because they don't do right? Or the coworker that, uh, well, it's just easier to avoid? Is there the neighbor that you tell your kids don't hang around with and, and you do the same? Now, now, I'm not saying that you get involved with whatever sinful activities they're involved with. I'm not saying you don't take safety precautions, but, but is it sometimes just easier to try to avoid those people that really need something? They need help. They need to see Jesus' love. And today, Jesus tells us that, well, we're the ones that get to show it. And what's easier, you, you, see, you see them as people who would be a drain to your life, taking instead of giving. And besides, they've caused their own problems, right? Today, Jesus' hard word for you is love them. Love the lost. Because they need his love. And Jesus has given you the opportunity to show Jesus' love to them. Love the lost. He did. Look at our text. There at the beginning we see him hanging around with the, the tax collectors and sinners. He's hanging around with those that others try to avoid. Even the, the religious establishment, right? Right? You see that in the second verse. The Pharisees and teachers of the law are muttering. They're, they're complaining. They're griping about Jesus. How could he hang out with such people? After all, they had been taught not to. Let me read for you what one of the rabbinical commentaries says. So the, these were the, the writings of the rabbis that, that were around that these Pharisees would have been studying. This is what it says. Let not a man associate with the wicked not even to bring him to the law. That's what they were being taught. Here's another one. There is joy before God when those who provoke him perish before God. So those faithful Pharisees had their reasons to stay away from those who just seemed to cause so many problems. What about you? Do you have your reasons? You know, when, when you see the teens loitering, clearly up to no good, what's your first thought? When you think of the drug addicts that are such a drain on, on your tax dollars, right, for all the, the law enforcement time and effort that they take up, for the, the programs to provide for them when they clearly won't, what, what's your first thought? When you think of the acquaintance who's always gossiping about you or the coworker who doesn't think like you, is your first thought, they need Jesus. And not in a condescending way. Like for real. They need love. They need me to show them that love so that I can tell them about Jesus. Sadly, that's probably not always your first thought. I know it's not always mine. That's why it's a hard truth when Jesus tells us today, love the lost. Too hard. That's why Jesus shows us how. First of all, we see him hanging around with the tax collectors and sinners. He loved them enough to teach them. And then when the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were, were muttering and giving Jesus a hard time for doing what he was doing, for doing the right thing, Jesus loved them too. He wanted them to know what, what his love was like. And so he tells a story, a couple of them actually. And Jesus' stories, these parables, have such a powerful way of getting past the obstacles that we put up, right? That, that catching us off guard as they break through our walls. So, so think about these stories. To these people who did not want to have to love people that they didn't like, Jesus asks the question, <clears throat> what would you do if you lost a sheep? Not a hard answer, right? The kids got it in the children's sermon, right? You find it. 
You go and you seek for it and you find it. And when you find it, what do you do? Well, you bring it back, right? That's just obvious. And how do you feel about that? Well, you're happy, right? You're rejoicing that you found the sheep that was lost. Not, not a, a, a complex or complicated story. Or for those of you that might not be rich enough to, to own a flock, well, how about the, the poor person who, who loses a coin worth a tenth of their life savings? What are you going to do then? Well, you find it, right? You seek and seek and seek. You do what it takes. You light the lamp. You sweep until you find it. And when you find it, how do you feel? Happy, right? It, it's, it's, it's easy. That, that's just natural. That's, the story makes a lot of sense. It's just, what's he saying? If that's how you feel about a sheep or a coin, well, you make the connection. And here's his point. That's how God feels about those people that you don't think are worth your time. That's how Jesus feels about you. When you show your lostness by not wanting to love those in your life who have hurt you with their unfaithfulness like Hosea's wife, who disgust you with their sin like that Corinthian man. Whether your lostness is like the Pharisees who don't want to love or like that sheep who wandered away, got distracted and stopped listening to the the shepherd's voice, Jesus loves the lost. And I just love how, how simple this vivid picture is. Of course the shepherd's going to go off and find the sheep. He misses it. He cares for it. He needs it. And when he finds it, of course, he's going to pick it up and carry it back on his shoulders. Jesus loved you that much. Like that shepherd, he left his home, his heavenly home to come and deal with all the dangers of this wilderness. And more than that, shepherd, he didn't just risk his life, he gave it. He came here to become one of us, to die for our sins. That's how much Jesus loved the lost. That's how much Jesus loved you. And then can you imagine how he feels when after doing all of that, we wander. Like that sheep that was in the pasture with all the other sheep. Well, it didn't want to be lost. It got distracted. Started paying attention to something else and wasn't listening so much to the shepherd's voice and before he knew it, all of a sudden, well, where is everybody? Lost. Like that coin, we find ourselves where where we just shouldn't be. Jesus can't stand it when we're lost. So he did and will do everything to get us back. I want to read for you how one commentator described this. I I love this picture. He says, as far as Jesus is concerned, humanly speaking, the sinner is heavier when he lies on Jesus' heart before he is found than when he lies on his shoulders after being found. So, of course, the shepherd carries you back when you're too weak to walk. Of course, the the shepherd rejoices, but but here's the place where where the parable takes its turn. You notice that in Jesus' parables, there's always a lot in the parable that is just normal. It is how everyday life goes, but then there's something that is like above and beyond, right? Here's where we get to that, the rejoicing. Yeah, it makes sense that he's going to be happy he found the sheep. It makes sense she's going to be happy she found the coin, but throw in a party? Really? He invites all the community over. He's got to feed them. That's going to cost him more than the meat of one lamb. So his celebration is just, it's it's huge. It's like too much, right? Or or the the coin, she invites everybody over and she's poor. It's going to cost her more than that coin is worth to have this party. But that's Jesus' point. The celebration that God has over us when we repent The singing of the angels in heaven when he hears our confession and and gets to proclaim that absolution. It's astounding. I tell you, 
that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. That was the end to both of those parables. Compare verses 7 and verse 10. You see what's happening? Like the neighbors of the shepherd, like the neighbors of the woman, we are being invited to join in on this celebration because Jesus loves the lost. So let's rejoice with this shepherd. Let's rejoice with these angels in heaven. And motivated by the joy that the shepherd has over us, let's share in the work. Let's be a part of seeking the lost. That means forgiving the one who hurt you like Hosea's wife. It means forgetting about the past of that Corinthian man and loving him anyway. It means going out of your way to help the neighbor that needs it, to befriend the the, the one who is annoying, to comfort the one grieving over the mess that they've made of their life, even though it is entirely their fault. Loving the lost. Let's do that hard thing that Jesus commands us to do today. In fact, let's celebrate that we get to love the lost. It's just a reminder of what Jesus has done for us. And let's make sure that that as a church, we are loving the lost. That means continuing to help people that need it. Restocking our pantry that's gotten a little bit low. It means going out and, and reaching out and doing the work it takes to invite them to come and find out about Jesus and see in us that love, whether that's, that's canvassing on Wednesday night or, or like the work that went into the, the, the fuzz run table yesterday where, where so many people came out to, to invite people to come here. It means doing the work of, of, well, preparing for the fall festival that's coming up where we're inviting so many people that, hopefully a ton of people that don't normally come to church. And they come because it's going to be a great day and it takes works to put that on, but, but they also get to hear about Jesus. They get to see Jesus' love in action. And let's make sure that, that we love the lost in how we treat one another, even the ones that aren't like us in how we welcome those people who come. It, it's a, a big deal. Re, remember the first time you came? I hope you remember someone who, who made you feel at home, who welcomed you. That's huge because, well, if it doesn't happen, just had a conversation this week with someone that we had canvassed, and they came to church, and they told me no one welcomed me. You guys didn't want me here. I I said hi to someone in the parking lot and they didn't respond. I came in here and the only people that greeted me were the people wearing robes. And I said, please come come again. Give us another try. We're sorry. It makes a big difference. So let's make sure that that we welcome, that we celebrate those people, even if it makes me uncomfortable. Let's, uh, Remember the three-minute rule and the ten-minute rule. I haven't talked about those in a while. Remember what they are? Three-minute rule. For the first three minutes after church, make sure you go and find someone that you haven't talked to in a really long time or that you've never met before and talk to them. Your friends will still be there three minutes later. You can catch them later. But, but make sure that, that everybody knows how much we're celebrating that, that the lost are found together. And then the 10 minute rule, that's the no church business for the 10 minutes before or the 10 minutes after church so that we have that time to talk with one another, to to, to celebrate each other, to celebrate with the angels in heaven. Jesus loves the lost. He loves you and me and he did everything to make us his. He celebrates when we repent of our sins and ask for his forgiveness and strength. All heaven celebrates. Let's celebrate with them. And let's do the hard thing Jesus asks of us today. Let's love the lost in Christ. Amen.